Hello, my name is Carl Steinberg, and this is the Carl Steinberg Show. As you can see, this is a, a St. Patrick's Day show. We have some uh, St. Patrick's Day items, lots of green things. I have a green cardigan on. It's wool, so it's kind of warm. Uh, this is, of course, the day that St. Patrick uh, invented the shamrock shake, and that's why we drink them on this day to, to honor him. Uh, we've got one right here. I like that they have the, uh, the cherry in there. Uh, now that's really uh, festive. And this, I'm sure you've all heard one of these before, a slide whistle. Funny story, this one's brand new, but the other day I was at a friend's house and he said he had a gift for me for the show. And it was a, uh, a plastic one, a uh, slide whistle. And he brought it out and we're laughing and thinking about the things we could use it on the show. And uh, right when he handed it to me and I almost started playing it, I asked, where did you get that slide whistle anyways? And he said, I found it at the thrift store. I stopped in my tracks. Of course, I'm not going to put something like that in my mouth that was in the thrift store. Uh, and I left it there, uh, pretended that I left it there. And the next day I went out and bought this fine metal slide whistle at my music store in beautiful Golden Valley at the Golden Valley Shopping Center. This is a professional side whistle, they tell me. Uh, the moral of the story is don't, don't put things in your mouth that you find at the thrift store. Uh, a couple days later, I got a call from him and he said he had a cold sore and he, he was wondering where it came from. He'd never had a cold sore before. I said, it's from that slide whistle, you dummy. So don't do that. Let's see, what do we have? On the, uh, oh, before we start, we have a couple great guests today, but I need to make a correction. If you saw our Valentine's Day show uh, last month, I said that Dazia had a what did I say? Dentist appointment, which was true. Uh, she's not here today either. She has a, a pottery class or something like that. Uh, but Eric Longenecker, I mistakenly said, uh, had diarrhea. That turns out to not be true. I heard him wrong on the telephone. Um, he actually said he had a panacea. Panacea, which is a, a solution for all, uh, all bad things. You know, uh, Kayla? Yeah? Let's, uh, let's try that one again. I don't think people know what panacea is, at least not our audience. Um, just keep it on this shot, and uh, I'll, I'll try that again, OK? So it turns out Eric didn't say he had diarrhea. He was at a pizzeria. Huh? Eat pizza. That's something we all can relate to and enjoy. All right, on with our show. Our first guest, you might have seen on vine.com, that is, oh, she's meowing right here. She's very soft and cuddling. You'll probably want to pet her. Her name is Zoe. No, it's Panda. Oh, hello. Hello, Panda, and her human companion. Zoe, welcome to the show. It's actually Zoe. Zoe, oh, oh yeah. I have my card upside down. <laughs> Zoe, thank you uh, for coming on the show, and Panda, it's very nice to, uh, to see you both here. Now, I've been told, and, uh, and I, I saw this morning, you have a, a video. Um, did I get the, the address right? Is it vine.com? Yep, vine. Now, that, how did, I think it might be vine.co, though. Okay, well, uh, can you put the correct address on? There it is on the screen. And uh, we would like to know more about this famous uh, video of pandas. And I hear she says something special on there. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, um, well, panda's always been kind of vocal. Um, one morning I was waking up and he was sitting on my chest and I was like, panda? I love you. And then he said it right back, and I got my phone out and I tried to see if he would do it again, and he did. And really? I got it on, yeah, I got it on the video. So. Was it just those two times? Well, no, he he likes to replicate what you say. So like syllable for syllable, if you say something with like three or four syllables, he replicates the syllables with really? his meows. Yeah. Could we could so, we see that video? Yeah. Let's do you do have it. it on? I see you've got your laptop there. Meow. Hi. You want to watch it? Okay, is that the video right there? Mm -hmm. Can we watch it together? Panda, say I love you. Meow, meow, meow. 
Let's watch that one more time. I want to see it again. Panda, say I love you. <laughs> wow. It certainly did sound like she said I love you. Now, have, is that, uh, I'm not that familiar with, with Fine. Is that, can you see how many people have watched it? Is mm -hmm. it, they have like you a counter? You can see, yep, how many, um, how many likes and like revines. You can't see how many people exactly watched it, or at least at the beginning of Vine, they made some changes. But What's a revine, that's where they share it with somebody? Yep, yep, they repost it onto their Vine page. And how many people do you know that have, uh, is there a number on there, approximately? Um, well, it started on Vine, and it's about, 350k right now wow. on Vine and on YouTube combined roughly 40 million views. It's the same video on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And have you, how did you get started on, on these? Are they called Vines or do you call them videos? Vines. Vines? Yeah. And are they all that short? Uh, yep, they're all six uh, seconds long. You can cut them and people are really creative. But that's the limit, six seconds? Yep, six seconds. I see. Sure. And how many do you, have you made more than? Yeah, I've made some more. Panda and I, we like to sing duets together, oh, yeah? so we have some of those. Can we see some of those? Sure. Are there titles for these, or are you just? Uh... Um, I don't really have any titles for them, but let's see. Oh, this one is <laughs> pretty cute. <laughs> Those are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, do you only make uh, uh, vines of, uh, excuse me, of panda, or do you make them of, of um, other animals? Well, I have another cat, and she's maybe not so much as vocally talented as panda mm. is, but she's kind of funny. You find her in all sorts of different boxes, and just, she's the weirdest thing. I think I have some of her on here, actually. Let's see if I can find one. This one. <laughs> 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 now, uh, in addition to the video, uh, I hear that you're also a photographer. I am, yeah. Do you have a photography studio or is it, uh, how does that um, work? I kind of just shoot on site, I like outdoor lighting. Uh, I don't have any, um, any lights or anything like that, so. I see. Yeah. And do you have a um, like a website that, that they're on and people can um, see? I have them? a Facebook that they're on right now. It's ZHL Photography. ZHL Photography. Mm -hmm. we'll put that on. There it is on the screen there. And how long have you been a photographer? Um, I've been doing photography since high school. I took some classes and just really fell in love with it. So yeah, it's been a few years. And it's something you enjoy to uh, do in your pastime, right? Definitely. Now. Um, you're not, uh, you're from Australia, right? Yeah. And uh, is that where you met Panda? No, no, no. Panda's from here. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm from Australia. My mom, uh, my mom is from there. My dad is from here. Oh. That's why we ended up here, but. Did they met over there and then came over no, here? No, they met on a newspaper um, ad for a blind date. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it a contest or something? No, or? Oh. I, I don't really know the details, huh. but they, they met and, yeah. That's wonderful. The rest is history, so. So do you ever visit, uh, I suppose you have family over there. Yep, yep, I was uh, back there right, I think 1999 to 2000, the new year. Oh. So that was the last time I was back, otherwise I have not been back since. But my family comes to visit <laughs> us sometimes. Yeah. What, uh, um, you know, I should know this, this is embarrassing, but uh, how, how big is Australia? Is that compared to like the United States? Um, well, I'd say it's the biggest island. <laughs> okay, biggest island. <laughs> well, technically not an island, but. And are they, are they made up of, uh, like we have states, do they have? Uh, um, it's uh, like territories. Territories. Yep. And then cities. Cities. And the um, Australia has the smallest population for how big it is oh, really? in the whole world. So it's a lot of like desert space? Oh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> That's funny. I, uh, you know where Perth is? Have you been there? I've not been to Perth. Is that like a, a desert area? Do you know? Or I you suppose know, you've never been there. You know, I have no idea. Um, originally from Melbourne. Okay. Which is down That's a big the, city, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty big. Sydney's probably, Sydney and Brisbane 
are probably bigger than Melbourne, but it's, it's pretty big. Uh, which one's the capital? Sydney. Sydney, okay. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? Scott's doing some light stuff over here. Our, photo our uh, cameraman, Scott Burdett, has uh, shined a light on our situation here. <laughs> Oops, I got the wrong. I almost asked you the next guest questions. What do we got here? Uh, so, uh, besides uh, making these wonderful uh, vines and photography, is there anything else you like to do in your pastime? Yeah, I'm a writer. Really? I, a few years ago, I started writing a monologue for a book that I actually turned into a novel. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute, the book's already written? It's halfway written. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's... Uh, it's called The Death of Iniquity. I was like that title. Inspired by uh, C.S. Lewis, the Screw Tape Letters. The Screw Tape Letters. Mm -hmm. I have not read that. It's good book. These two demons that are one is an uncle and the other is like his nephew, and he's the uncle is uh, coaching him through these letters that he writes. Hmm. It's really interesting. When did you start writing that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's been a while though. It's been a while. A work in progress. Yeah. Well, we're, we were very happy to uh, have you on the show. I was wondering if um, you would uh, help me with an experiment here. As you, you see, we have some, uh, some beer and some green dye. Uh, I don't drink myself, that's why I'm drinking a non-alcoholic beer here, but it's St. Patrick's Day, and we've all heard of the uh, green beer that apparently you have to get at a bar, because... Uh, Dazia and I went to the liquor store and said, where's the green beer? And they said, no, you have to make it. So we have the uh, green dye here. Whoa, I'm going to shoot out into outer space here. <laughs> Maybe you could grab the other glass. Mm -hmm. And oh, there's your shamrock shake. You could grab the dye. I'll grab one of these. Let's see. Now, if, if it's, uh, my calculations are correct, we should only need like three or four drops in these these clean mugs, these are not thrift store mugs. I should uh, <laughs> point out, like a filthy slide whistle. And three or four, I guess, maybe three in that one and four in that one. We'll see which one wins. All right. And if you could open that beer, we'll uh, put these together and yeah. Let's see if this. Let's see if this works. What do you think, Panda? Hope this doesn't fizz all over. Whoa! On your mark, get set, green beer. Hopefully, hey, it's working. Look at that. Ooh, even the foam is green. <laughs> That's really pretty. For sure. Mine is darker than yours. Yeah, well, I split that extra, that extra drop. I think three is the, the key. I think so. Nice. Well, thank you for coming on the show, Zoe and Panda. And we have a, uh, uh, some parting gifts, but we'll wait till the, the, the end of the show. And right now, we're going to take a short ba break, and we'll be right back. And we're back. For our next guest, we have a young man named Frost, and he's written a song that I think is just marvelous. I don't quite know if it's a uh, Irish song or anti-Irish song, but you be the judge. Here he is with his with his uh, St. Patrick's Day theme song, Frost. It comes around but once a year from across the Emerald Line, like a banshee out of good old Notre Dame. When the laddies get all surly over easy bucks and girls, and the morning after's never quite the same. So you put it on your calendar the 17th of March. And you set aside your best green attire You watch the Boston Celtics And I'm sorry I can't help it But point out this simple fact I must require You're not Irish You're not a patty You don't know nothing about the IRA You drink a beer that's from Milwaukee When you celebrate 
St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, you heard me. High up and said it. You have no idea what Ireland's about. So you listen to you too? Yeah, well, whoop de for you knew. You couldn't stomach but a single pint of stout. You're not Irish. You're not a patty. You don't know nothing about the IRA. You drink a beer that's from Milwaukee when you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. You've seen the Boondock Saints with their vulgar Irish milk, but you've got no lucky charms to win a fight. You spy a crimson lass and you race to her glass, but it's just you and your old wee leprechaun tonight. You're not Irish, you're not a patty, you don't know nothing about the IRA. You drink a beer that's from Milwaukee when you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Oh, daddy boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Glen to Glen and cross the mountainside. But you don't know the rest of the words, do ya? You wanna know why? Cause it's not in your foggy Molly CD! Oh, nice shirt. It reads, I wish I were drunk. That's original. Did you get that at Spencer Gibbs or Hot Topic? How about that plaid kill? You know, plaid is Scottish, right? Oh, you getting mad at me because you got a not work tattoo? Sit down and drink your shamrock shake, frat boy. You're not Irish. You're not a patty, you don't know nothing about the IRA. You drink a beer that's from Milwaukee when you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. You're not Irish, not even a little. You don't know nothing about the IRA. You drink a beer that's from Milwaukee when you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. When you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. That was marvelous. Thank you. Frost, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Carl. Can you tell us a little more about that song? I, when I first heard that, I flipped out. Because there's not <laughs> many, although you're not specifically saying St. Patrick's Day, it is in that uh, Right, theme. right. Yeah, it's, it's uh, well, I, I do mention St. Patrick's Day in there. I just simply was so irritated when I would try to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And there would be so many people who had no idea what Ireland was about, and they sure. were just a bunch of frat boys out to get raucously drunk. Yeah. And um, put on your green. Right. And yeah, and, and celebrate everything with green. And, and there's there's more green uh, celebrated with St. Patrick's Day in America than there is in, in Ireland. Really? So, now yeah, that's typically wear black. Really <laughs> interesting. Are you from Ireland? I am partly Irish. I'm actually mostly Finnish. Finnish. So rather than celebrate St. Patrick's Day, I usually celebrate St. Urho's Day. Now, a friend of mine used to have a St. Urho's t-shirt, and I didn't know uh, what that, I knew it had something to do with, does. with Finland or that specific day. Uh, it's actually the day before St. Patrick's Day. So the Finns beat the Irish when it comes to major drinking holidays. Is it the same um, theme? Well, no, no, it's not the same at all. St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland, and uh, St. Urho drove the grasshoppers out of Finland. The grasshoppers? Mm -hmm. Was that a, yes. a, was this a problem a long time ago? It was. The grasshoppers uh, would uh, destroy the vineyards. So, uh, oh, and, yeah, of course. And so the Finns wanted their wine back, and so that's why the official purple uh, and green colors celebrate St. Urho's oh, Day. Oh, you've got purple right there. Uh -huh, I see. That's right. Purple and green. Yep. St. Uh, Urho's Day right here on the Carl Steinberg <laughs> Show. Now, oh, by the way, this is Zoe. Zoe, this is Frost. Pleasure she to is, meet you. Nice to meet you. She's from Australia, but uh, did you say you're partly Irish? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. And panda. I didn't. I didn't say panda, did I? And panda, the, the famous talking cat. Yes. Um, my ancestors from Australia are actually Irish convicts. Really? Yep. Uh, wow. Sent over during the potato famine for stealing an overcoat. We've got a lot of drama here on the show today. <laughs> Grasshoppers and uh, drought. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, uh, great guitar playing, too, Thank you. Frost. Uh, did you write that song? Uh, by yourself, or was it are you in a band or something? I wrote it by myself, and uh, I had a couple friends help me record it. Okay. So uh, the first time we actually put a recording to it, I did it in a warehouse as a shop that I that I own. In a warehouse. So yeah, it wasn't even a, a fancy studio, but it turned out sounding pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Cause I've seen the uh, uh, the video on on YouTube, and sure. that's a gr great sound. Thanks. Uh, great song. So, and you, you said uh, those, that wasn't really a band, but they were helping you? 
Right, Are yeah. Are you in a band? I mean, you play music. Or do you, is this something you do professionally? Actually, no. This is just a, one of my many, many, many hobbies. So. Uh, yeah, I've got a whole <laughs> list of th I don't think we're going to get everything uh, in no. on here. But maybe we should start going down the list. You want to pick the next top? Sure. Uh, well. Um, if you can read my, my <laughs> handwriting. Sounds like we started talking about my Finnish heritage a little bit. Already, yeah, tell so. us a little more about that. I, you know, I don't hear an accent, so you weren't born? No, no. My dad is 100% uh, Finnish, but he was also born here in the U.S. Oh. Um, but all, both of his parents were 100% Finnish, so, and so on. So, so you got uh, a lot of Finnish. Right. So my great-grandparents uh, on my dad's side are all uh, from Finland. And so I have been to Finland twice. I've got many relatives over there that I keep uh, in touch with. And... Uh, is it really cold there? I heard it was cold. Strangely, Finland's climate and um, and ecology and everything, the whole biosphere around uh, around Finland is almost identical to Minnesota. Oh. It is really strange. You, you'll be driving through the, the Finnish countryside and be like, I recognize those huh. rocks. I've seen those same rocks in Duluth or... Same type same, of trees. Same trees, same foliage, like same everything, yeah. Interesting. You said you've been there twice? I have. That must have been quite a trip. Yep. Seeing, visiting some family. Exactly. Yeah. Visiting. I've got f uh, four branches of family over there. They're they're catching me drinking. It's not alcoholic beer, everybody. But uh, you uh, you guys are certainly welcome to. Now, uh, there's uh, Oduls and there's Mickey's. This is a sacrilege, Carl. How so? I thought that Green. was the Irish. Isn't that what they do? No. Uh, this is what they do in Chicago for college kids. <laughs> really? Yeah. That, so that's an American thing. It is very much an American thing. Well, we tried to get as much, <laughs> since I'm not uh, Irish at, at all, we've got the, uh, uh, the four-leaf clovers. And uh, is this is this uh, an actual, you don't have to say the brand, but is that a real Irish brew? For the sake of the argument, we'll see, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I got something right here. I don't know if uh, green dye has any taste, but... Uh, Let's find out. Okay. Minty? No taste, no. no. <laughs> I suppose not. <laughs> well, let's, uh, speaking of music, um, you ha someone told me you have a, a radio show. Is that a music radio show, like you're a DJ or something? Uh, no, I have a podcast, uh, which is... That's the radio show, a radio isn't it? show, yeah, you might as well be. Um, that is uh, all based on uh, craft beers and cigars. Oh, so, so is this a craft beer? <laughs> this is the, just about the farthest thing from a craft beer, as you can imagine. Uh, but no, we, we get a few guys together and we crack open a craft beer that's usually a different one every time and review, review it. Oh. Uh, or a cigar. And sometimes we do beer and cigar pairings to, uh, to figure you out mean what like goes when together. People have like white wine and fish. Exactly. Like I didn't exactly. know that was a thing. So. Well, typically people have um, cigars with a scotch or a whiskey. Yeah. And. Um, in our case, we've been trying to pair them with beers, and they work sometimes because hmm. um, cigars tend to have a cocoa or a chocolatey flavor, an earthy flavor sometimes, and you can get those same sort of chocolatey flavors out of good beers. Now, is this beer and the cigars, are they sponsors, or you're just picking on your own? No, we're just picking on our own, just throwing well, caution to the good. wind. Well, that's good. That's a good, uh, good review. <laughs> do you have guests on the show? We do, and actually the show is nothing about the cigars or the beer. They're just uh, as a gateway to get us into talking. I like so. that. What's the name of it again? It's the Burn and Brew Podcast. And is there, so a podcast, that's uh, uh, online. And yep. is there like a website you go to and you yep. click? You can go to burnandbrew.com. And there's also, uh, you can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher, uh, Libsyn. There's several different places you can find so us. So the, the main room, uh, the main one is uh, burnandbrew.com. There it sure. is on the screen. Mm -hmm. And when they go there, they just click on the podcast. Sure, yeah, the whole all the episodes there are listed one at a time. Do you have to watch them live, or you can watch? I mean, listen to the old ones. You do not have to listen to the old ones. You can listen to each individual episode. So. Oh, um, yeah, and as you're, they're on there as you're doing it. Yep, they're about uh, an hour long each. Lots of laughs, lots of giggling. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to try that sometime. It's a fun time. Uh, other than uh, uh, writing fantastic songs and <laughs> podcasts. Let's see here. Uh, st <laughs> stagecraft. Now, that's something that I've always been... <laughs> look at Ben. Ben has got the craziest expression <laughs> on his face right now. I don't really She's know. enjoying the show, oh, yeah, I think. Just mouth agape. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs>
Must smell something. Maybe she smells the uh, the beer. Could be. <laughs> now, uh, stagecraft. I have no segue for that. Oh so. sure. The next one on the list is stagecraft, and that's something I want to uh, talk about with you because it's something I've always been interested in. Sure. What, how did you get in there, and what is that? So uh, I started uh, doing technical theater work in high school, and um, building sets for all kinds of different plays. The first play I did was uh, Into the Woods, which is now a, a motion picture. That you may have seen. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it stemmed from there, and my goal was to eventually work in um, special effects for filmmaking. Oh. And so through high school and college, I studied special effects for film. And uh, so that ranged from everything from props to specialty sets to miniatures, visual effects. Um, things like that. So anything that was practical that would be done in front of the camera, um, that was the type of effects I worked on. I see. Um, I very recently started dabbling into um, digital effects. Hmm. Um, what do you like better? I definitely like the practical stuff better. Okay. <laughs> Me too. It's a lot of fun. So I've done everything from um, motion pictures, I've done a few commercials. Um, uh, Sometimes a lot of people get together for uh, cosplay events, uh, you know, conventions and things like that, so I've done. Now cosplay, cosplay for those that, you, that don't know, that's uh, events that uh, people dress up as superheroes, is that basically? Superheroes could be it, uh, characters from uh, television shows, movies, whatever. And is that a yearly event? Um, it could be. I, I tend to go to Convergence, which is uh, the largest sci-fi and fantasy convention, and that's in the Midwest part of the United States. Zoe is uh, nodding. Have you been there, too? Yes, I have. <laughs> and you dressed up. Uh, is it one character you... I have done several different things. Um, one year I did uh, a steampunk pirate or steampunk <laughs> uh, airship type of sailor. Hmm. And I had a, there's nothing fancy about the costume, but I had a clockwork mechanical parrot that was sitting on my shoulder. That you made? And I made the parrot, yes. Do we have a, you, I know you I do not have photos of oh, that particular have. one, okay. but uh, I, I do have many other things that I've done like that. So you I've know, done uh, a couple movies where I've built some large sets that look like castles. Yeah, yeah. that right there, you sent me some photos. Let me see sure. if I can bring them up here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know which one. Maybe you can tell me. Oh, you can just start at the top. We can run through them if you like. This one right <laughs> here. These are, are fan well, you can see on your screen there. Sure, now, so when I saw that, I thought it was a, a no. picture of an ancient uh, building. Right. Now, this was actually research that was the inspired for what, uh, this is what I was given from the art department. They said, oh, we want okay. a castle that looks like this. I see. And so uh, they gave me that, and I put together some plans and sketches and did the production design part of it. And then uh, moving on from there, um, I started constructing the set and covering Ooh. it with styrofoam. That's all styrofoam? Um, the surface of it is all styrofoam, yep. And so uh, the idea there is styrofoam is kind of my uh, medium of choice when it comes to artwork because it's so malleable. You can do so many things with it. Um, and a lot of the work that I've done ends up looking like stone. Mm -hmm. Once it's textured and painted, it looks like stone, especially on camera. Not so much up close with, the, with your hands when you're I touching see. on it, but, but on camera, it looks like stone. I saw, um, I don't know where it was, but it was a, uh, a doorway you had made. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. An entrance, and it had lights in it and gargoyles, if sure. I remember correctly. Yep, what, was, that, what was that? It was fantastic. That was for uh, the goth prom that was started here in the Twin Cities. So it, uh, it's been used, um, this archway has been a uh, facade over the entrance to the nightclub. And so it just kind of redresses the front of the nightclub for the evening um, to say that this is the goth prom event that's happening. And they've reused that in different years? Because right. the, uh, if I'm remembering this right, the, cha the, the date or the theme change or something. Exactly, uh, the theme changes every year. And uh, there's part of the, it's kind of a module that's part of the top of the, the facade that pops out. You can put a new one in there that swaps the theme out every year. And also, um, in storage, this facade has been damaged a few times, so um, even the main parts of it that weren't designed to be replaced have been replaced with other parts of it that change from year to year. So do you, if something like f fell off, you can just glue on another piece of... Right, And exactly. that was all carved out of... That was all mostly carved out of styrofoam, the surface of it was. There's a steel structure in the interior. It's I suppose covered to keep with it wood. strong. Yep. To keep it strong, yep, exactly. And then, um, and then, yeah, it's covered with styrofoam and carved and textured that way. 
Fantastic. Now, I know, uh, I know we talked a little bit before. I had tried to make something. As you see, we have, we have nothing here because I, I'm not exactly. talented. Well, we've got a table. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make these big uh, letters, Carl, and I had the styrofoam, and I'm hacking at it with a scissors and a knife, and it's a big mess. Yep. I, I take it that's <laughs> not what you use. No, no. I use specialty tools primarily. I use um, tools that would melt the styrofoam. So cutting okay. it, you would use a, a specialty hot knife, which is basically just a blade that heats up and just cuts right through the styrofoam very, very and nice and clean. And makes it a smooth surface? For the most part, yeah. And you use that for all the fine details, too? That kind uh, not generally speaking. Sometimes uh, if you get really fine detail, you can actually use sandpaper on styrofoam oh. and smooth it out. Is it a it special styrofoam? Not really, no. Oh. You can use... Uh, the plain pink insulating foam that you can get, or, or even the white uh, beadboard type stuff. So anything works. Um, I've done things like, um, now the photo you're looking at now is, yeah. is part of a concept art that was given to me for a movie that actually didn't become a full set, but I designed a full set. So what happened was is we took the, uh, this concept art and we ended up making some production designs of it that have elevations and drawings. Oh. So that may be one of the next things you look at. Then from there, um, I went and I built a study model, which was kind of the idea of the concept to be able to show someone in a sort of a 3D fashion, this, uh, oh. this study model that's made out of um, foam core. How big is that? That model is uh, a bit bigger than your table oh. that's here. So it's a wow. pretty good sized model. So all the detail in the trees there, that was done with the hot? Uh, in this case, that one was done through foam core. So this is part of my model making background. So I uh, see. Uh, uh, that one's uh, paper based. It's basically paper. <laughs> and then from there, uh, they went and they took that design, and instead of making a full set for that one, they only used it in one shot and one scene, and so they built wow. it in CG instead, so since it was cheaper than building a full set. So is this full size? That one is just uh, the CG background. The only thing that's real in that one is the, is the subject. Amazing. Yep. That really looks <laughs> real. Well, I suppose it is type yep. of real. And then there's... Um, the things that I've done that are, are very real for this particular film we were working on was uh, kind of a castle set, a castle, castle chamber. And uh, that one was at what I started showing you earlier where we had um, the research that was sent to me. I did the set that was covered with styrofoam. Then that styrofoam was textured with a blowtorch, which kind of melts the styrofoam in oh. a little bit, makes it look a little bit more like stone. And then sprayed on with several layers of paint that bring out different depths of field and so on. So and then under the right lighting, it looks great. It looks how like did real you, stone. How did you learn all this? So I learned this uh, both in college and through high school. So um, mostly college is where I learned a lot of it at. Yeah, I went I to Bemidji see. State University where it's one of the few places in the country where you can get a degree in special effects miniature model making. Fascinating. Which is strange because they don't do a whole lot of it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would. Well. Yeah. Speaking of uh, building, I'm sorry, I have to, to move along you here because uh, the last item we have here is the hoodwinked house. Now, oh, can yes. you tell us, tell us about what, uh, what, what, what is that hood, hoodwinked house? So I bought my first house mm -hmm. uh, just not quite two years ago in 2013. And uh, after a few days after moving in, um, the plumbing started rupturing inside the walls. Um, the electrical stopped working in certain places. The HVAC was wrong. And it was interesting because I had had the house inspected and um, everything turned out looking fine. I went and checked all the building permits and so on. There weren't any. Um, so I felt that this house was just beautiful on the inside and really well cared for. As it turns out, um, the house had been flipped. Oh. Um, I got hoodwinked. So the house had been flipped by someone who uh, I think was trying to turn it into an investment property, but instead uh, found some problems. And rather than fix them, uh, didn't get any building permits, hmm. didn't hire any licensed contractors, and just kind of got some people together to just cover up all the problems with concrete, drywall, carpet, and so on. So it couldn't be seen. So it couldn't be seen, and make it look very nice. And it basically temporarily patched this thing up just well enough to be sold, and they turned a huge profit on the so, property. So, wow, that is 
Yeah, terrible. The, the worst part is is that uh, there's um, so many problems. They're, they took out load-bearing walls. Ooh. There was uh, part of the roof had collapsed that they patched over just with shingles, but without actually fixing the roof underneath. Now, um, how did you, you had to start tearing things apart, I imagine, right. to find these. Right, and so the, the way that we started finding these initially is because water would start coming through the walls oh. and, you know, through the ceiling and things. And we're like, oh, what's going on here? And so we'd be pulling open drywall to find the, the problem, and we'd find, you know, broken roof. We would find, um, you know, pipes that were put in backwards. Um, we would find that parts of the framing had been burnt. Oh. Um, from when someone was soldering pipes in place, uh, you're not supposed to do them in place. You're supposed to solder the pipes elsewhere, then install them. But they were done in place and really scorched the wood very badly, burning the structure. Terrible. There were screws that would go into the pipes, puncturing uh, the pipes. So there were seven water leaks. Water pipes? Water pipes, oh. yep. So there were seven leaks behind the walls. Um, the HVAC had been cut into. The electrical, uh, the lights would flicker and parts of it were, were done just completely wrong. And you've um, been documenting this now, right? Very, very carefully I've been documenting it um, through a website called hoodwinkedhouse.com. Uh, you have videos on there. Uh, videos, yep. Yeah. So I've started a YouTube channel um, and a few other things. So it's been pretty interesting. It's gotten the attention of uh, local news media, um, a couple magazines, newspapers, and so on. So it's a pretty interesting story because uh, the way our laws are set up, there's really no way to go after the person who did this. Terrible. So we know who the person is who did it. Um, we have lots of facts around the case. Uh, I've had several attorneys look at this, and everyone agrees that fraud was committed, mm -hmm. that it was a theft by swindle. Absolutely. But uh, our laws are not set up to, to work this way. There's no precedence for a buyer ever going after a seller and ever being able to collect anything. Um, and this was investigated by the county, and the county investigator also could not find any substantial evidence, believe it or not. So what, what do you do? What have you been doing? Uh, in this case, there's really nothing I can do to kind of save the property from my, my standpoint. Um, so I'm kind of turning this around in my own head. Um, we're taking the house and making an example of uh, an awareness campaign. We're mm -hmm. letting people know that this is a real type of crime that's out there that can happen to anyone. Even mm -hmm. if you have your house inspected, this could still have happened to you if you're not very, very careful in your research about the house you may be buying. And uh, we're also working with local lawmakers to try to get the laws changed so that there can be a way for, um, if not the buyer, at least a building inspector to go after yeah. a previous seller. That's awful. <laughs> it is. Well, let's see if we but, can make, uh, it, uh, make it a better thing in the future. Yeah. I, I don't want this ever to happen to another Minnesotan again. Me neither. So let's uh, make sure everyone checks out that. Would it be better if they go to the website or the YouTube? Uh, the website is probably the best place to go first. It's hoodwinkedhouse.com, and that includes all of the photos and documentation that are on there, including the YouTube videos. Well, Frost... I don't know what to say after that, but uh, unfortunately we've uh, run out of, of time here. Thank you both uh, for being on the show and sharing, us, sharing with us your stories. Thanks, Carl. We like to uh, do a little thing. I have the, uh, what we call the magic bag here. And at the end of each show, we give away some uh, lovely parting gifts. I hope you think they're lovely. First of all, we have for Panda a, a little Ducky, you see that there? And uh, she makes, uh, she or he, I can't tell, makes a, a cracking noise. Maybe you can hear it on my mic. Oh, I think Panda likes it. Let's uh, hand it on over. <laughs> Here you go, Panda. I hope you enjoy that. Oh, boy. Do you like that, Panda? <laughs> also, not from the thrift store. It's a brand new duck. Is that a duck? Yes, a duck. He's excited. And for Zoe, thank you for coming on the show. We have here is a rare statue. I'll put it right here so you can get a good shot of a chipmunk <laughs> conversing with a snail. Now, as you know, that doesn't normally happen in, in nature too often, so this was quite <laughs> spectacular that the artist was be able to capture uh, these two who know? You know, it makes you think. What are they? What are they talking about? What are they? Uh, what are their their plans? Maybe they're going to go on a vacation somewhere. Who knows? There you go, Zoe. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. <clears throat> and Frost, 
last but not least, we have a Darth Vader. What? From that, uh, that uh, Star Trek movie, Star Wars, excuse me. Uh-huh. It's, and I don't think he talks, but you can make him talk if you use a little bit of a imagination. I am your father, Frost. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Is that how he sounds? I've never seen the movie myself. <laughs> there, but, uh, there you go. I Learn, hope you have lots of fun with that. Learn more about my roots and my heritage. Exactly. My here. Tell him all about it. Speaking of that, are you going to finish that beer? No, please. Wow. Go ahead. There's, there's lots, lots to go around. <laughs> well, folks, we've reached the end of our show. We hope you've had a good time and learned a lot about mm-hmm. Australia and Finland and hoodwinked houses. Good night. Извините, что редко пишу вам, дорогие мои старики. По надкам и поземка бушует, но у нас холодам вопреки. Каждым днем боль за тройку все жалче, и в минуты девочки ри. Ведь КАМАЗ это многое значит, просто главная стройка страны. И дал истории, как пламя, об этом расскажем и так. Такого нигде нет, только на Каме, на бережных челнах. Такого нигде нет.